Hey, seventh graders, welcome back to our continued study of the Civil War. By now, you should already be familiar with uh, how the war started uh, with the election of Abraham Lincoln as president, which led to the secession of several states from the Union and the first battle in which Confederate troops took Fort Sumter in South Carolina. We've discussed the overwhelming advantage the North had in resources and men, as well as the strategies of both sides. We've mentioned the Southern victories at the two battles of Bull Run, and you should also have completed a reading on Antietam, which was probably the bloodiest battle of the war in terms of loss of life on both sides. In this video, we're gonna talk about the Emancipation Proclamation and uh, General Stonewall Jackson. So please pay attention uh, to the video for clues to help you answer the short video quiz that um, you're going to need to complete at the end. On January 1st, 1863, Lincoln issued a proclamation abolishing slavery in the rebellious southern states, meaning the Confederate territories. Thanks to the telegraph, the news quickly spread. In the wake of Lincoln's emancipation of the slaves, black American soldiers rushed to enlist for the Union. Almost 200,000 signed up by the end of the war. General James Blunt describes their skill as fighters. He says, quote, I never saw such fighting as was done by the Negro Regiment. They make better soldiers in every respect than any other troops I have ever had under my command. African-American soldiers showed great courage on the battlefield and wore their uniforms with pride. General Thomas Stonewall Jackson believed that as long as he was, quote, a soldier of the army of the living God, that God would take care of the ultimate outcome of the war. Jackson would admonish uh, certain soldiers on the fields not to flinch if the bullets were flying in their direction because, quote, God has determined whether that bullet's going to hit you or not. That gave Jackson this sense of appearance, sense and appearance of great courage on the battlefield. He was also General Lee's prized general. Uh, there's no doubt that Jackson was a deeply religious man. Jackson commented to a friend that he felt that God was unhappy with the South in general and would bring about war to correct certain shortcomings of the South. On May 2nd, 1863, as the day begin, began, General uh, Confederate generals Robert E. Lee and Thomas Jonathan Stonewall Jackson met for the first, last time to discuss their audacious plan to divide their forces to attack a numerically superior enemy at Chancellorsville. Jackson attacked and crushed the enemy flank. Darkness fell, but Jackson wanted to continue the attack. He rode forward to scout enemy lines. As his party returned to his own lines, Confederate troops mistook them for the enemy and opened to fire. Two musket balls struck Jackson in his left arm. One of them shattered the bone. A third ball lodged in his right hand. A surgeon amputated his left arm, but a few days later, pneumonia set in. At 3.15 p.m. on May 10, 1863, Stonewall Jackson died. This completes our video lesson. Uh, please don't forget to uh, do the quick uh, short video quiz that should have accompanied this video. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to contact me, jlawton at ndyfs.org. We'll see you next time.